Hey everybody, Joe Mafia here with Master Life by Design. Finally, this worked. Third time's a charm. I had to restart my phone. It wouldn't work for some reason, no matter what I did. Sometimes technology, I think it's Mercury retrograde or something of that nature. So anyway, I wanted to uh, just give you a quick update. I have, obviously we have a topic of conversation today really quickly. I don't want to take more than maybe five, 10 minutes to go through this, how to destroy that critical little voice in your head. Um, Christine and I, we've got a lot going on. A lot of great things are happening. Um, we're, our house is in line. We're waiting for a dig date for our new house in Idaho. I'm super excited about that around April time frame. I'm driving all of our stuff here from San Diego to Idaho come uh, November 30th. And, uh, and then we go up to the Bay Area to live there until our house is built. So. Um, anyway, today I wanted to just jump in. I usually like to kind of give an update, just did that, and then sometimes people ask questions and whatnot. But I just wanted to share with you, you know, we all have this little voice in our head, right? That critical little voice that doesn't seem to be always on our side. It seems like it's always playing against us. Like, why does that little voice, why is that against us? And the answer is, is because it's due to our, our nature of, you know, generations and generations from our ancestors, right? Our brain was designed to protect us, for us to be able to survive, right? <clears throat> and so we had to have this mechanism in our brain that said when something happened, it's either we either need to fight or we need to flight, we need to run to stay alive, right? So our brain's wired that way and we think, even though times have changed, our brain hasn't evolved that way. And so we're always having this critical little voice that doesn't want to be a player on our team. It wants to be on the opposing team, right? So there's three easy steps to overcome this. They're, they're not hard. And once you have this and you can practice this, repetition is the mother of skill. Condition this into your body, not just in your mind. but All right. Sorry, had a phone call. Um, sorry about the interruption. So if we can start to condition this, not just in our brain, but in our body too, all of a sudden these three steps to become second nature. And you start to what I'll tell you in a little bit around is um, he killed a monster why it's small. This little voice, right? And so the first step is you got to be aware. You have to understand, am I aware that this little voice is playing against me? If you're not, and it's just you're in flow with it, you're kind of going with it, then you're gonna get captured in the moment. Have you, have you, any of you ever had that happen where all of a sudden, um, I'm just trying to see here if people are writing. Um, have you ever had it where you're just like, you're in maybe like an argument with someone and you're just, you're so wrapped up in it and then when it finishes, you're like, how did I even get caught up in that conversation? How did I even, you know, how did I stoop that low? And we get so caught up in it. And so, <clears throat> um, Kate just joined, Dominic, what's going on everybody? And so anyway, we have to be aware. We have to kind of step out of the problem in that moment and be aware that, hey, <clears throat> this little voice isn't on my team. It's not supporting me, right? That internal communication that you have with yourself is not there supporting you. And that something needs to change. So when I'm aware of something like this and that awareness comes in, that first step's complete, I'm like, okay, I realize that this isn't supporting me. Then I move on to step two. Step two is about creating a pattern interrupt, all right? A pattern interrupt, what that means is it, start, it stops the path, going down the path that you're on. Instead of going, keep going, keep going, keep going, what you're doing is you're interrupting the pattern. Have you ever had it where <clears throat> maybe you were crying and you didn't want anyone to know that you were crying. And then a phone call comes in and you you answer it. You try to play it off like you weren't crying. You're like, hey, can I call you back? And you're like, yeah. And then you're like, the phone's hung up and you're just like, okay, what was I crying about? And that's a pattern interrupt. That phone call was a pattern interrupt. Now you have the power to interrupt your own patterns, your own thought patterns. You know, from, you know, one of my favorites with clients that I'll share is, you know, for a pattern interrupt, sometimes clients like to have playful as long as the monster's not too big, that you catch the awareness is there early, is just a quick pattern interrupt is bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Like I have all, a lot of my female clients, they love that, right? It's just like, it's playful, it's joyful. If they have kids even, right, they know all about bubbles. Mike, what's going on, brother? So 
The second component is you actually interrupting the pattern. That could be from bubbles, 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 to saying, stop, this isn't it, to, you know, thank goodness that I'm not a cockroach in Bulgaria, right? Took that one from Tony Robbins, right? So we want to interrupt the pattern because if you don't, it's like driving, it's like going down a hill on a sled. You have so much momentum that you can't, oh, Mike wants to join in. Let's add Mike as a guest. Let's see if Mike's going to join in on us. Mike is a phenomenal coach. If he can't make it, no big deal. Oh, he can't make it. Okay, no worries. So I thought he hit the button. No worries, Mike. Appreciate it. So anyway, after we interrupt the pattern, it's like it's like you're going down the hill. And if you don't grab onto something or pull the brake, depending on what kind of sled you have, you're going to just keep momentum going. And it's going to be really hard to stop when you have so much speed. So we got to interrupt the pattern of the thought process that you're having of this critical internal communication. So once we are aware of it, first step, we're aware that this isn't serving us. The second is we interrupt the pattern. Sometimes that's even shifting your physiology. As my buddy Mike would say, you know, shifting your breathing. Your breathing is part of the physiology. Different breathing sequences and patterns change you in the biochemistry within the brain. So shifting our body and our breathing can make a massive difference. From there is the third step. <clears throat> you interrupted the pattern. You're aware of what's going on. It's not supporting you. Now we have to shift our focus on what do we want? What is it that we want? And so that's where you get to consciously decide and create in your life or life by design, now it's mindset by design, right? So you get to design the mind that you want and saying, okay, if I, I don't want that, then what do I want? And you shift your focus to what you want and, and questions can help with that. If I was to hit this, what would I actually get from it? How would I feel? What would be some of the benefits? What would the impact have on my life? And so those are just some questions that you can ask yourself around that. Let me turn this down and all these notifications. So <clears throat> those are the three steps. First is self-awareness, self having the awareness of what's going on. Second is the pattern interrupt. And third is shifting your focus. And I guess you could say that there's a fourth step I'm not really going to include it here because I think it's known that after you have a tool and you receive that tool and you know what to do with the tool, that you now put it into action. You have to take action. That's the last step, but it's almost a given because you can watch this video. You can take these three easy steps and do nothing with them, and it won't have any impact on your life. So you have to take them and apply them. You got to take action. So with that being said, you now have three easy steps that you can do to create or calm that critical voice that's inside that's always playing against you. And here's the bad news, but here's the blessing that it's always going to be that way. It's always going to be that way. That internal communication that you have is usually not going to be on your side 100% of the time. So it's this ongoing process, this ongoing evolution that we get to have every day. And if you turn it into a game, it's much more fun going through life than trying to battle it, right? We have a choice in how we view this, the perception we see through, the lens that we see through. And so you can either see it as a battle you have to go through each day, or you can look through the lens of it's a game that you're winning, you're looking to win each day. You do that, all of a sudden, life becomes more magical, becomes more fun, you become more empowered, you become uh, more certain about yourself. It's what allows you to start seeing that you can take control because control happens within, not from without. So what I mean is the things that are going on around you, you don't have control over that. The one thing you do have control over, what's going on here? How can we make that in alignment with who you are and what you want to achieve. As soon as you do that, that's when things on the outside start to shift. So here's what I'll say. Take these steps, your action step, if you're watching this video, is to go out there, apply these three easy steps, see how they've done, how you've done with them. And again, going back to what I said earlier, you want to kill the monster why it's small. So when these thoughts come up, catch the, have that awareness click a lot faster. The more you do this, the awareness will kick in a lot faster. So don't beat yourself up. Give yourself the permission slip to say, it's okay if I don't notice it right away. And once you do, from there, 
you have to do these three steps really quickly. Otherwise, the more that you feed in, it's like going down the hill on the sled, you pick up more momentum. And every time you focus, where you send your focus, you're feeding that internal critic, that monster. And then it grows up to be Godzilla. You want to kill that little thought process when it's a little baby and not when it's Godzilla. Because if you try to apply these three steps when it's Godzilla, you're going to come back to me and say, Joe, it didn't work. And I'm going to ask, well, was this, were you focused on it for quite a while? Did you allow it to grow within you for a while? Did you focus on it and go on a downward spiral? Oh, yeah. Well, that's why. This tool, this approach won't work. This approach is knocking it out early enough. Or you want to knock it out early. It's kind of like, for those of you, I know I'm using a lot of winter analogies, but for those of you that like live in snow, I guess I'm excited because I'm moving to a snowy area in Idaho which I'm so excited about. And, um, but if you have snow and you wait until four or five feet have dumped down before you try to clear your sidewalk, it's gonna be a lot harder to move or to conquer that task versus if you do it when you only have an inch and you do it each time you have an inch. All of a sudden it becomes easier to clear out your driveway or your sidewalk. So kill the monster while it's small. Go out and apply these three simple steps. Here's what I know. I, I know you're, you're probably wondering, Joe, if I take this, what could really happen in my life? What are the benefits that can happen? I promise you that if you kill this critic, why it's small, if you get that internal communication back on the right track, all of a sudden your day starts to improve and you start to have this ripple effect of positivity in your life. And I'm not here one of those guys saying just think positive because honestly thinking positive is only a step out of the entire process. Right? Shifting your focus to something more empowering is part of the process. It's not the whole process, and people get that mixed up. When you can apply these three simple steps when they're little, when that monster is a little guy, and you're able to eliminate it, the game changes. You have a ripple effect. You're causing your body to go into a different energetic state. You create a different, a different energy around you, and all of a sudden, hey, Brandy, hey, Samantha, and thanks for joining you create a different energy about yourself and you notice you start to attract different things in your life. So apply those three, these three simple steps and watch the ripple effect that it has on your day and on the results in your life. It makes a major difference. Here's what I'll say. I'm going to wrap up here. Look, every single one of you, we all have a mission that was placed in our heart. I believe by God, you can call it universe creator, whatever you want to call it. But there was something put it within you, a purpose within you that you were meant to fulfill. There's only these outside circumstances that try to stop you from what you want to achieve in this world. And if you allow that to infiltrate you and allow it to partner up with that little critic in your head, all of a sudden you're going to fall victim to defeat, failure, sadness, anger, guilt, whatever that might be. You have something so strong within you. It's called free will. You have the free will to choose. Sometimes we just got to get let go of the baggage. And that's why I'm here sharing some of these videos and these posts that I do is to be able to show that you have the ability, the free will, the power within you. You know, um, I just created a password for my mom and, uh, it, and I made the password, I am powerful. Nothing, if you figure out my mom's email address, no big deal, <laughs> but I am powerful. Have an affirmation as your, um, as your passwords. That's one of the things that I do um, a lot. Louie said, Joey, what's good, kid? I haven't seen you in a while in a minute. What's going on? I know you're out enjoying Florida, my friend. I hope it's treating you well and beautiful out there, man. Hope all is well with you. So going back, wrapping up here. Look, you guys all have something in your heart. You were meant to shine. You were meant to have something great in your life. We weren't, we weren't born just to get by. We weren't born just to settle. We weren't born to say this is enough or this is okay. It's all right to want more and to have more, but you have to do more to get it. The only reason why you feel like it's bad is because this limiting belief or society, these social norms that you're surrounded by to say you're, you're supposed to you know, settle. And I look at when you settle, what you're actually doing is you're telling yourself, your unconscious mind, that you're not willing to put your best foot forward. See, the reason why we'll say there's unbelievable relationships out there, why there's multimillionaires and billionaires, why there's great parents out there is because they never settle. They're always, they have an internal principle, an internal dial that's turned to always do your best. And you have that same dial. Maybe you haven't discovered it yet, or maybe you did and you're afraid to turn it because of what you can achieve. 
and you can turn that dial anytime you want. So uh, my encouragement is there's something in your heart you know you want to go after. There's something that you know you need to do. You can do it. Go out there, chase after. You're going to fall. You're going to fail. You're going to, you're going to have to pick yourself back up, dust yourself off because shit happens in life. And as soon as you can overcome it, the quicker you overcome those things and allow those speed bumps to not become walls, all of a sudden, life happens quickly. All the things that you desire and you want to manifest in your life start to flood in. You have the power within you to be able to do that. Hey, Justin. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up. I have some clients that are actually uh, got some interesting outcomes for our calls today. Really excited to break through. A lot of the work we're doing is around the unconscious level, really getting the programming of what's going on at a deeper level and breaking through that. So they're really excited to work on the program. So look, if there's some things that are holding you back in your life, you're like, ah, oh, you know, hey, there's a part of me that wants to go after a part of me that doesn't. There's a part of me that I just, I don't feel like I can. You know, there's some programming, no matter how bad you want it, there's some programming that's stopping you. So if that's you, or if that's someone that you know that you care about, that they're not moving forward, reach out. Christine and I, we'd love to work with you. We have, we're launching even more. We're going bigger and better with our coaching department with Master Life by Design. So work with one of our coaches to be able to overcome that programming at a deeper level because everything else is just on the surface and nothing changes on the surface. So if that's you, you're interested, you're like, Joe, there's some things in my life that I really want to break through and I just don't know what to do or I couldn't overcome it awesome reach out to us let's talk about working together working with one of our coaches here at master life by design so that you can start to design the life that you want so you can master your life by design so with that go out there make today count joe moffitt with master life by design love you guys have a great one talk soon see ya